Hello everyone and welcome back to another addicted fishing video. Today it's all about this stuff right here. We're carnivores and we're going out on the river with Chef David Olson to catch some fish and make some amazing steaks on the river at the end of the day. But if this so happens, we're at the Puyallup Sportsman Show here in Puyallup, Washington, meeting all our new friends. If you haven't already, guys, be sure to come join us and see us at the next Sportsman Show in Portland, Oregon. We'll be having our third premiere of Addicted Alaska 3. Thanks to all you awesome Addicts fans that came out and saw us here in Puyallup. Look forward to seeing you again. Enjoy this episode. Cast it up and just let float. Yep, cast it up. We want them right about 45 downriver to us here. Okay, so yeah. I'm not casting here, I'm casting. You're casting 90 degrees, yep. 90 so degrees right out in front of me? Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay, go ahead, brother. Uh, I'm gonna come right over the top of you, man. Oh, what Rob? the was that? Shouldn't have Yankee pooed so hard. Shouldn't have yanked it, guys. Where I would live. If I were a salmon, if I were a steelhead, this is where I would live. If I were eating jigs, we're just like this. Man, that's looking good, boys. You on? Really? No, no. Oh, okay. Just aggressively. Oh, got, got, got it. Got it. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> good. 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 Look at oh, it. Look at the old dude. Woo, woo. Oh, and oh, perfect. Hey, he Quick did the job for us. And he didn't even steal our bait. That was uh, called a win-win. It is a win-win. Because you always wonder if it was actually a steal at that bitch yet. But I think the days when you hook. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> take it, take it, take it. Take it. <laughs> tip down in the water. Don't tip down deep in the water. Oh God, deep, 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 Yep, exactly. Oh there God, go. what's happening here? There we go. Oh! Okay, He's gonna go in. There he go. Oh, 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 oh God, there we go. Alex, I was just talking about it, how on this, on days like today, when we've been fishing so hard, every bobber down is a mystery. You wonder what it is. You might get it, you might miss it, but literally the words were coming out of my mouth. The bobber goes down. There you go. You missed right it, got it. That's amazing. Come this way, come this way, walk yep. around. Yep. Go nice and deep and walk the dog here. He's got a little wrap he do on, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's, He's in. One, that hooks step, one step forward for me. That hooks really good. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. There we go. Come on up. Walk him in. Walk him in. Nice. Slow lift. One, two, three. Got him. Hey. hey. Is it a, oh, it's a while. It's a while. Okay, brother. We did it. Two hard days of fishing. Look, look at how pretty that thing is. Woo! Money. So everybody, we're gonna take, we wanna get a really great photo with our man here. So we're gonna take this fish down to a calm spot, get it to the bank, that way we can get out in the water with the fish and safely release it back into the wild. Well, that one's only a half a steelhead. That day I handed it off, which is cheating. Yeah, not how funny. we want this, but it's a half. So hey, it's a tag team. You get another one, it's a, you have a fish and a half in That's Washington. right, That's a, it's a tag team. <laughs> I don't know if we could have done that any other way, right? No, I don't a little think bit so. of teamwork. No. Wow, dude. First one. It's so crazy. First one in Washington. Well done. Let's see if we can get this. This is an incredible fish. Look how beautiful this is. Look at the color. There we go. Wow, the spots on that thing. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, wow. What a specimen. This is why we came all the way out here, right? right? Back to the water for this. Beautiful creature. Here we go. Onward, my friend. Fight another day. What a cool way off into the distance, man. <laughs> nice job. That water's not as cold as yesterday. No, it's that not. It didn't hurt as bad. We'll wait till we get to the jet boat to talk about how cold it is. Right. Okay, let's go. Out of the boat, everybody. Making a little power move. Try to fish a little bit of backwater here. There's some stuff that I want to get some jigs into. These little offshoots of the main river. So we're gonna give her a shot. Got David coming up behind me. I got my little trout jig just in case there's some trout. But we're gonna see if there's something sitting in here. Beauty. 
Right on that spinner. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Coming in, coming in hot. There he is. Just hit, bringing that spinner right down the water. That shimmer, that purple, a little bit of that blue. Just a, amazing. There we go, help. There he is. That's an eater. I'm coming for you, brother. That's an eater. I'm coming Come for you. <laughs> that is beautiful. Look at that thing. That big old truth. Wow, look at that cutty. Hey, oh, no, no, no. Holy smokes. Wow. Holy cripes. Look at that fish. Little, no, get back. What a beaut. Holy crap. Look at this amazing. thing, everybody. Look at the colors on that. Wow, what a incredible cutthroat. That's about as big as they come, my friend. So we've been talking about doing a little trout trouterizer with this mule we're doing tonight. But as I preach a lot in these videos, I do not like to keep these big coastal cutthroat, uh, just mainly because this fish could be up to four, five, six years old. You know, right, a lot of right. them I've seen where they have no maxillary, they've been caught multiple times. So I like to try to let the ones go that are this size that'll be spawning and and you know creating more of these fish. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. But you're so right. By us putting this fish back, you have three, four, five generations right. more of cutthroat to be in these waters. And it's a new law in Washington that allows us to keep them. And so I think there's a little bit of research that hasn't been done. I don't like keeping the really big ones, but odds are we're gonna get another one that's gonna be eater size. Man, I'll tell you. Dude, awesome. he said Jordan, I really want a spinner. And that's I said, what I want. Here you man. go, dude. I he love did. it. <laughs> love it, man. Spinner fish. There's nothing like that hook on a spinner. Isn't that a cool looking? Oh, oh, there he goes. He's out. <laughs> He's out. Goodbye. Good job, brother. Bring it in. Heck yeah. That was awesome. Cool fish. Super cool. Right in the fast water, too. Oh, I love it. That's my favorite sound. Ruben's like, are you serious? God. Are you just playing with me? <laughs> so good. Good job, dude. Thank you. I'm going to keep going, tying up. That worked. I just need to quit paying attention. Well, everybody, the day is coming to a close. What an absolute struggle over the last couple days, but so much fun had with new friends. That's the best part about having people travel all the way across the country, in my opinion, is because no matter if you catch one fish or you catch 20, it's still an amazing experience because there's so many new things happening and you're getting to spend quality time in beautiful places that you've never seen before, which I'm sure these guys can attest to. This is where we're spending our evening right now. I'm gonna get us a fire built. My man over here is gonna get some amazing steaks prepared. Check this out, guys. We have these super <laughs> oh incredible God. rib steaks. These things are absolute behemoths. Check out the size of those. Really nice intermuscular marbling, super cool fat cap. We're gonna do a really neat cowboy crust around the exterior uh, with a chop house butter seasoning across each of the sides. We're gonna reverse sear these. So we're gonna try to go slow at first, then we're gonna put them down into the fire and have a little bit of fun. Okay, it's time to get a fire going. I'm already hungry. Let's go. Please. Okay, I got my little flyaway fish mat knee pad here. Okay. I'm gonna do a little trick today, everybody. Something I've been wanting to do for some time. And we got a few different pieces of wood here, but everybody keeps telling me out there to try to start a fire with potato chips. Let's see if it can be done. How old does this thing burn? I mean, fairly good. Keep trying. One eternity later. So what we have here, this is, uh, this is the, uh, the absolutely unnecessary bushcraft grill. That's the AUBC. <laughs> it's a concoction of random wood and butcher's twine, or I would certainly uh, recommend anyone to use like a stainless steel type of wire. But essentially, you have three random pieces of beech wood here tying up at the top. Uh, Jordan has a bit of uh, wood kindling that's gonna go down to the bottom. We'll get the fire going. Have some fun with it tonight. By the side of the beach. It was beautiful out. There. 
I, it's, it's a little industrial, I like it. It's industrial for the industrial type of eating we're about to do. Yeah. We're working hard. We didn't get home till 11 last night, guys. I don't think we talked about that. But of course, the episode we filmed yesterday, you guys saw earlier in the week, and we worked our butts off. We went a long ways, we fished a lot of water, and went in search of finding some big, beautiful, bright uh, sea lice steelhead. And we had a tough day, and we, we stretched it out so that we could bring you guys the awesome recipe. One of the coolest recipes that I've ever seen anybody do. So go check that, the link is in the description of yesterday's video. And get ready for an amazing meal tonight. Paired up with the steaks tonight, we have a super rad shiitake mushroom cook. So we have these wild shiitake mushrooms. We're gonna hit these up with a little bit of the olive oil. We have garlic that's gonna go inside of the pan as well. This is kind of cool, you can buy these in the store. It's uh, garlic, uh, that uh, the cloves that have the peels already removed. And then in addition to that, we'll use some of the chop house butter. Really, really easy stuff. They're gonna be earthy, a little bit salty super good and a perfect pairing with the steaks. First up, olive oil. We're just gonna get a really nice drizzle of that olive oil over top of the steaks. We're gonna get both sides really good here. And now what this does is two different things. It's gonna add flavor and a contact point for all the really great rub that we have here. Let's do this, get both sides really good. Always make sure you get the fat cap. There we go. I don't want to lose any bit of that olive oil. Let's go in here. And then first up, we have the chop house butter. And we're going to cover this with a really aggressive dosing here of this butter. There's, you can see in there, there's some really nice dried herbs. You have things in there like thyme, a little bit of rosemary, some salt, and parsley. Really good stuff. Just get a good rub in here. Now, the one thing that I really recommend to folks with these big cuts of beef, whole cuts, whether you're using chicken, you're using lamb, etc. I'm gonna save this exterior cap because I wanna hit that with a coffee rub. Get extra in. This is a big, big cut of beef. A big cut of beef. Both sides really nicely. Extra, we can season more as we go. Flipping over. Really get that dried butter crust all around the steak. Super, super good stuff. Check that out. Now what we're looking for before we go to the grill, it doesn't take long, but we're looking for some of the seasoning to start to tack. You can see we still have drier components of that seasoning in this area and in here. We just need to let it sit and eventually we'll get to this point where the entirety of the steak crust has a tack around the exteriors, where the seasoning has a degree of wetness. So here we go. Let's make sure that we're not missing anything from this board. No seasoning wasted. Now next up, we're gonna go here with the coffee rub. Coffee rub directly in to the center of the board. And look at those huge granules of the roasted garlic, the chocolate, and the pepper. I'm just getting a heavy dose right down here in the center of the board. Next up is rolling the crust. Out. We have this beautiful two-toned chocolate chili roasted garlic exterior with the chop house butter herb crust. So dang good. Look at you, Ruben. <laughs> we have the adjustable vertical UVC <laughs> grill here. Yeah. So the steaks are just finished in season. They're super, super. Where's Jordan and Ruben going? And Little. Beer on. <laughs> uh, okay, massive steaks for us tonight besides the Columbia River. We hard sold it that we're all gonna be here. Alex, you on board? Oh yeah. Let's do it. Paired with the steaks tonight, we're gonna do a super incredible shiitake mushroom with pancetta. So what pancetta is, is this cured Italian pork, right? It's super beautiful, it's very fatty. So we're gonna pop it right in the pan here with the uh, mushroom. We have the garlic, 
we're going to include as well. And let's just get all of this in the pan. And we're just gonna let it kind of slowly roast down together. And there is nothing wrong with a ton of garlic. Olive oil in next. And we're gonna have this combination of this salty, a little bit sweet with some of the chop house butter from Weber Seasonings, some of the dried herb that's in there as well. And blessed some organic thyme. And I know it's organic because it, it says so on the package. Does it taste different? Probably not. So here we go. A couple sprigs of thyme going in. This is a really beautiful thyme, by the way. It's incredible. I'm just gonna mix everything up, get it all around here in the dish. Now, if I were just sauteing this, I would definitely saute down and cook out the fat from this pancetta first, and then I would go in with the garlic and then finish with the mushroom. It's as simple as that it's gonna be amazing. We even got the chef a bottle of wine for his steaks. What? Look at you guys. We got some White Claw, we got a couple beers, and we it's got a, wine. It's a high quality brand from the local Chevron here. Look at this. There's nothing that screams four dudes cooking around a fire than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's some gourmet fungi. Look at that. So one thing you're gonna have to get really comfortable with live fire cooking is you can't be afraid of the fire. Right now, we have a charring taking place with the steaks that are down deep inside of the pit of fire. Look at this. That's what we want. So we're gonna peel these out now the fire's built up. We have a nice crust going around the exterior of that steak. Really, really nice. Let's actually move this out. Cool part about this is we got a handle. Look at that. There we go. That's what we want. Yeah, I'm gonna do my part, addicts. I'm doing my part. Going back in? Going in on the bottom. Boom, hot sizzle. We're simply gonna let those now slow roast to finish. We're about 100 degrees inside of the steaks right now. Just wanna peel those up to about 120, 125 degrees, and then we're gonna let them sit and rest. Thumbnail's done, dude. I'm Photo's still done. Let's go. So here we are. Look at little. Well, let's all look at little. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie. Ready for mine. <laughs> let's get in here. Ribeye steaks. Oh, wow. Super, super good. Check this out. So we do a little technique here over the fire. So folks saw some super, super epic flames. And listen, what we did is we continued to turn these steaks directly over the fire. And let's just get in some really nice slices here. We need to be about half an inch thick on these slices just going straight through. Look at how beautiful that is. Wall to wall, medium rare, perfection. And my favorite bite, the spinalis. Look how tender that is. And listen, this is an absolutely beautiful piece of ribeye steak prepared directly over our bushcraft grill. This is so incredible and it's so simple. It's steak, use a little bit of olive oil, we have the butter seasoning. We got the coffee seasoning on the exterior. Thank you so much, man. Look at this. I'm doing this, so I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody That's what says. That's the How do you forget about these? We spent a lot of time on these. Oh my God. Yeah, get on it. So right in here. <laughs> Wind down. So we got the pancetta. We got the shiitake the herbs, the garlic, that's no joke. I literally got nothing else to say. That was so good. Thank you so much, man. Well, second outro I've ever done with my man here. And what do you know, my mouth is full. We got <laughs> delicious man. food. We killed it. We had Thank it you up. so much for preparing these awesome dishes, man. And thanks for coming all the way out here to visit. We're gonna do it again, yeah. a lot more. Yep, I can't wait to come meet, visit you out in the Midwest. And if you guys wanna see more awesome catch and cooks just like this one here, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there. We do not offer a lifetime warranty with our UBC grills. <laughs>